for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Philip Martin, Johnny. Uh, what do you know about hydroelectric power dams? Not a thing, should I? The Travers Construction Company is building one at Sierra de Avare. That's a couple of hundred miles west of Caracas, Venezuela. Don't you might like to run down there and take a look at it? Well, that's very thoughtful of you, but uh, no thanks. There's a time penalty clause in their contract, Johnny, and we put up the completion bond. Now, if the dam isn't finished by a week from Friday, it starts costing us 5000 a day until it is. You sound worried. We got a radiogram from Asa Travers yesterday claiming that attempts are being made to prevent the completion of the dam on schedule. Last night, Travers got himself involved in a premature dynamite explosion. Did it kill him? No. That was accomplished by two thirty-eight caliber slugs they found in him afterwards. I wonder if coffee's any cheaper in Venezuela. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Eastern Indemnity Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the sulfur and brimstone matter. Expense account item one, $273.50. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Caracas, Venezuela. I was met at the Makatea Airport by the deceased traveler's partner. Senor Gatulio Matarsa, who wasted little time on the amenities. Ten minutes later, we were aboard a twin-engine Cessna with Matarsa at the controls, flying west toward the Sierra de Avari Dam. As to who may have killed in your travels, or why I can tell you not, it is possible Captain Boros of the Cedar Police will have more information for us when we arrive. Why federal authorities on a homicide matter? Oh, the Sierra de Avarre Dam is being partially financed by governmental funds. Naturally, the federal authorities are interested. Mm-hmm. Now, what's your opinion about Asa Travers' report that somebody's trying to sabotage the dam? Well, it is true we have had some breakdown of equipment, some vital materials lost or stolen. I do not believe anyone is attempting to delay construction by physical means. What do you believe? In many police organizations, Senor Dollar, they, even in yours, in the United States, there will always be a small percentage of dishonest men. You're talking about Captain Ball? On a project such as the Sierra de Avarre Dam, two diligent police investigations could cause disastrous work stoppages, vital delays which could carry us far beyond the contract deadline. And at 5,000 a day, that could turn out to be pretty rough. Did either you or Travers try to prove this little theory of yours? We will be at the dam shortly, Senor Dollar, and your investigation can begin. It would not perhaps be wise of me to attempt to give you any preconceived ideas. Maybe you should have thought of that before you tried so hard. Some 20 minutes later, Matarsa put the plane down on a bare earth field in the midst of a jumble of giant steam shovels, earth movers, and bulldozers. Overlooking it all was the great bulk of the Sierra de Avari Dam. Matarsa made some excuse about having to check on a turbine installation, so I made my way alone to the shack which was construction headquarters of the project. Sorry. Excuse me, senor. My fault. No, I didn't care. Hasta luego, senor. Yeah. Yeah? My name is Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. I'm looking for Captain Boros. Insurance investigator. That's all we need out here now. Who's paying you off, Boros or Matasa? Maybe we better start over again. My name is Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. Who are you? Bill Anthony. I'm straw boss with this outfit. And let's get one thing straight right now. I'm here to build this dam, and it's going to get built in spite of you or Boris or Matarsa or anyone else. Very admirable. Now, where's Captain Boris? Last I heard, he was going over to Travers' house. And where's that? 
near the town of Puerto Cáceres, some ten miles north of here. Uh-huh. We uh, got some jeeps parked down on the other side of the hill. Tell one of the boys I said he should drive you out there. You're mighty accommodating all of a sudden. We'll get you out of my hair for a while. Yeah, that's what I figured. Oh, by the way, who's the girl I bumped into on my way in? Philomena Trapp. Aza's daughter? His widow. Why? You must have been discussing some pretty important business. What makes you think so? Neither one of you remember to wipe the lipstick off your chin. There were a few questions I wanted to put to Matarsa regarding Bill Anthony and Aza Travers' comely young widow, Philomena, but I didn't see him around. So I made my way to the motor pool and got myself transportation and a guide to take me to Aza Travers' home. It is true, then, that the senor North Americano has come here on the sad matter of senor Travers' day. Well, the word's gotten around pretty fast, hasn't it, Pedro? Well, when one has lived in the Sierra Roja as long as has Pedro de la Cuesta... Anything strange or different becomes quickly known. Well, then maybe Pedro de la Cuesta knows something about why Senor Travers was killed. I know only that when men make an evil thing, Senor, it will bring evil. You're talking about the building of the dam? Si, Senor. Why should that be an evil thing? It is not right for men to change the things which are natural to the earth, Senor. To force the flowing waters of a river backward upon themselves. This is not a good thing, senor. You talk like a plantation owner, Pedro. No, no, senor. My father was but a poor farmer who worked hard that I might go to the school of the workers here. But Pedro knows it is not a good thing what is being done here today. The evil that man creates will destroy him as it has already done to senor Trevor. And there will be more it will destroy, senor. Many, many more. Now, that's a happy thought. Aza Travers' house was a neat white stucco bungalow, half hidden by a mass of flowering bougainvillea. I left Pedro de la Cuesta with his gloomy thoughts while I went up to see if anyone was around. It soon became evident that somebody was. Shots came from a low barn-like building at the rear of the property, and I wasted no time getting over there to see if Pedro's prophecy had already been fulfilled. Buenas tardes, senor. So we meet again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but you look so startled, senor. Almost as though you had expected to find a body in here. Well, I hadn't expected to find a shooting gallery, senor Travers. Ace, I had it built for my amusement. I have always found firearms fascinating ever since I was a little girl. And there is little else with which one may amuse oneself out here in this wilderness. I have become quite proficient at it. Mm. You see? It's not bad. What's the gun? 38 caliber on a 45 frame? Si, senor. And you are thinking perhaps that it is the same caliber bullet which caused the death of Asa? The thought had occurred to me, yeah. It is regrettable one was disappointed, senor. Capitan Boros has already checked the gun. Uh Uh-huh. I see. Where is the good captain? Oh, he left perhaps 20 minutes ago. We didn't pass him on the road. Are you always so suspicious of other persons' statements, senor Dollar? Let's say I'm curious. And you find something to be curious about concerning me? Oh, a number of things. Oh? Well, I haven't told you who I am or why I'm here, but... You seem to know. But of course, senor. Bill Anthony has called me on the telephone and so informed me. And you don't seem particularly grief-stricken over the death of your husband. I have a philosophy of life, senor. It is always to look forward, never back. It is only the future one may possibly control, never the past. Sometimes the past has a nasty habit of affecting one's future. Only if one has been guilty of some crime. And you haven't? (laughs) <laughs> Would you believe me if I said no? Senor Dollar. Senor Dollar. In here, Matasa. Senor. Senor, you must return with me to the dam at once. Why? What's up? It is that Capitan Morros. He has just ordered an immediate stoppage of all work on the dam.
Thank you, si, Senor Dollar. Already the work has come to a halt. Nothing is moving. The steam shovels, the concrete mixers, nothing. Uh huh. Where's Captain Boris? In a construction shack with Bill Anthony. Let's talk with him. I tell you, Senor Dollar, there is only one answer for this action. Captain Boros is looking for the sale. We'll talk to him. I'm about ready to shoot. Well, it's about time you got here, Dollar. Maybe you can talk some sense into this bullheaded jackass who calls himself Captain of Police. I have listened to enough of this kind of talk, Senor Anthony. I'm willing to talk sensibly and calmly with anyone. But violent words or actions will not sway me in the least. Well, that makes sense, Captain. Can you do the same about this sudden clamp-down order of yours? Quite simply, senor, I had no alternative. It was necessary to halt work upon the dam in order to prevent possible irreparable damage to the construction. What kind of nonsense is that, Capitan? It is a statement of fact, senor Metarsa. I discovered this afternoon that senor Anthony was about to dynamite a passageway for the new riverbed. He was employing an excessive amount of dynamite that would bring the hillside down upon the cut that has already been made. You're lying in your teeth, Boris. I am no engineer, Senor Anthony. But when the specifications call for 25 cases of dynamite, and I find 50 such cases are being employed, drastic action of some kind is certainly called for. How about that, Anthony? He's off his rocker, Dollar. I issued the specifications for the job. 25 cases were called for. And only 25 cases were taken out of the powder house. Seems to be a little difference of opinion, Captain. Suppose we go down and take a look at those dynamite charges. If you wish, senor. But I can assure you, you will be able to learn nothing that will alter my decision. Until I get to the bottom... Dynamite! The charges we set to blast the new riverbed. Somebody set them off! we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Our subsequent investigation showed that Bill Anthony's specifications for 25 cases of dynamite had cleared through the powder house just that way. And the explosive experts there said that only an amount greatly in excess of that could have caused the damage that had been done. And we discovered that the blast had been touched off by a crude, homemade sparking contraption we found in the brush on one of the nearby hills. It was dark by the time we got back to the construction shack. Matarsa was waiting for us with a report on the results of the investigating he and Bill Anthony had done. The original damage is not as great as we feared, senores. Yeah? How's that, Matassa? Well, it is true the explosion buried the new cot. It is only for a relatively short distance. We can bypass it through a natural canyon on the other side of the hill. The work will be completed by Friday. You are forgetting something, are you not, senor? Your work stoppage orders, Capitan Boros? Mm hmm. No. I am flying to Caracas tonight. There are higher authorities there who can quite easily countermand your orders. I am certain they will prevent you from interfering any longer in the construction of the Sierra de Avarre Dam. Buenas noches, senores. Looks like he's calling your hand, Captain. Si. And I have no doubt he will succeed, senor. There are those in Caracas who, for a handful of silver will sell practically anything, including their souls. You know, Matarsa has the same idea about you. Mm. He's not the first, nor will he be the last. A police official is always suspect. There are but few who realize that there are other considerations besides those of money. How about naming me one, Captain? Eight men have died so far in the construction of this dam, senor. All of them during the so-called accidents which have occurred. What if I should tell you that my reason for holding construction until we get to the bottom of this consists solely of a desire to save more lives? Well, I'd say it um, sounds reasonable. A 
construction project like the Sierra de Avari Dam, there's not much to do at night except eat and sleep. In the mess hall, I was served up a beautiful thing called cazuela. I was seriously considering presenting my compliments to the chef when I was called to the phone in Bill Anthony's office. I trust I did not interrupt anything too important, Senor Donner, but I am about to leave this dreary wilderness for the much more pleasant surroundings to be found in Caracas. Getting tired of target practice? Oh, I'm tired of many things, Senor. Tired and bored. So perhaps when you're finished with your business there, you would care to look me up in Caracas. I will be at the Gran Palacio. That's not what you called me about. Not everything, perhaps. What's the rest of it? Well, after you left, I happen to recall what my dear husband, Asa, once said to me concerning the dam and the accidents which had been occurring there. What was it? He said, strange how the works of the devil always carry the odor of sulfur and brimstone with them. What else did he say? Well, it is all, senor. But he cryptic, isn't it? It means nothing to you. Should it? Would it help any if I were to tell you that very close to where the dynamite explosion occurred this afternoon, there is an old abandoned sulfur mine? It might. What do you know about an old sulfur mine somewhere around here, Pedro? I know that there is one, senor, but it has not been worked. There has been no one near it for many years. It could be of no importance to anyone. Suppose we find out. There is evil in here, senor. Much evil. What is it this senor hopes to discover here? I'm not sure, Pedro. Senor? Up ahead there. What's your guess? Uh, this, those wooden boxes? Uh, how would I know? You've been working on a construction job, Pedro. Take a closer look. Uh, it is the explosive, senor. The boxes of dynamite? Yeah. Some empty, some full. Well, that answers one question. What question, senor? Where the excess dynamite came from that blew up half that mountain today. And take a look behind those stacked cases. Hmm? I... Santa Maria. Yeah. Looks like we got more answers than we bargained for. When we got back to the camp, I rounded up Captain Boros. He agreed with me heartily in all respects. Si, Senor Dollar. I would say your little trip to the sulfur mine has supplied us with several answers. Finding the dynamite, the body of Senor Bill Anthony. Let's not forget the gun, Captain. Hmm. 38 caliber. The same caliber that killed Senor Travers. The initials on the butt are GM. And when you consider that the sulfur mine is owned by Senor Getulio Metarsa... Yeah, yeah. How soon are you leaving for Caracas? Immediately. Perhaps you would like to return with me. That's the second best offer I've had in Venezuela. Oh? I leave first, Senor? Well, I should find the answer to that at the Gran Palacio. An hour and a half later, I checked into the Gran Palacio. Valet service did a fairly good job of removing the clinging yellow sulfur dust from my clothes, while a hot shower did the same for my skin. But nothing could help the chemical reaction of the sulfur dust that had tarnished the silver coins in my pocket until they were almost black. When I asked for Senora Travers, I was told she would be at the Hippodromo Nacional. Expense account item two, three dollars and fifty cents. Cab fare from the Gran Palacio to Caracas's sumptuous Hippodromo Nacional. Good evening, Senora. Senor Dollar. Surprise? In a way. I was not expecting to see you here tonight. Do you always accept invitations so hurriedly? Well, only under unusual circumstances. Do you find this one unusual? Well, let's say the widow's lack of grief over her husband's passing was rather marked. You're not being very amusing. 
Rodney, there was your explanation about that sulfur mine. It's leading Captain Boros to Catulio Matarsa just about now. Catulio? Well, he's the one who... Oh, that is too bad. Why? He had promised to take care of my expenses during my stay here in Caracas. Well, you'd better start looking for another philanthropist. Hmm. I, um, do not suppose... I don't think I could afford it. Oh, how unfortunate. Well, in that case, I would not consider asking you to pay for my drink. I'm still not too happy about that sulfur mine explanation. There is nothing more I can say, senor. Not even where you got that coin? Coin? The one you just threw on the bar. Tarnished. Almost black. In case you didn't know, that's what sulfur does to silver. I see. Well? It was given to me day before yesterday, senor. It was the wish of the giver that I purchase a candle with it. To burn for my husband. Who gave it to you? Pedro de la Cuesta. It didn't take long to find Captain Boros or to make the return flight to Sierra de Ovalle. Locating Pedro de la Cuesta was another matter. When we finally made it, dawn was already hitting the hills. Unfortunately, it looked like we were a little too late. Senor Dona. Yeah. I see him. That box he has with him. Another sparking mechanism. The dynamite must be buried in the hill beside him. Isn't the river on the other side? It is. If he explodes that dynamite, the river will break into a new channel and sweep down upon the dam. Hold it, Boris. There is no other way, senor. Only a bullet can stop him now. He can explode the charge at any time before we reach him. Let me take a crack at it. It's no good, Pedro. What you're doing is no good. It will destroy the evil, Senor. It will prevent the good earth from being drowned by the wicked water. For a while, maybe, but only for a while. No matter what you do here today, that dam will be built. No, Senor. It will be taken as an omen, as a sign from heaven. The evil thing will be left alone to drown in its own water. I say we to drown my Maria. Your Maria, Pedro? Who is she? The Esposa, Senor. My wife. She who came with me to this land almost 40 years ago. Maria, who worked with me in the soil, who bore our children, who gave of herself for me, our family, for our land. Our grave lies there beyond the hill, Senor, where the evil ones would release the water. Is that why you want to destroy the dam, Pedro? Because of Maria's grave? She belongs there, senor. In the good earth to which she gets so much of herself. And they wish to destroy her grave, senor. To drown it in those filthy waters so, so they can make money. To wash away the only thing that ever made anything in my life. How could I allow that, senor? How? Is that why you killed Senor Travers? He, he would not listen. On my knees I begged him, but they would not listen. An evil man, Senor. And Senor Anthony? Well, he suspects me. Follow me to the sulfur mine. I had no choice, Senor. And you have given me none now. Put the box down, Pedro. No, Senor. It is unfortunate you must die with me. Put it down. It is too late, senor. Perhaps somewhere we will meet again. Sorry, Pedro. Senor Dona, you're all right? Yeah. Thanks, Boris. How come you missed him? But it was necessary that I miss. What if I'd hit the box? And it caused contact. A most unhappy thought. So was the one I had. What was that, Senor Dollar? The same thing could have happened just now when it hit the ground. Expense account item three, $41.60. 
Hotel bill and incidentals in Caracas. Expense account item four, $267. Airfare and incidentals from Caracas back to Hartford. Expense account total, $585.60. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> 